Welcome back to the channel guys and in this video we are going to be going ahead and covering the Fallen Hope Assault Rifle. So without wasting a bunch of time let's just get straight into this. Alright so here we got the Fallen Hope Assault Rifle. It has a pretty nice color scheme black and gold I think it looks pretty good. Uh, aesthetically it looks pretty nice. So let's go ahead and get into the stats of this weapon starting with the unique ability. So the unique ability of the Fallen Hope is called the Perdition. So the Fallen Hope is a assault rifle and it is a ultimate assault rifle, so it has a unique ability. So this unique ability, like I said, is called Perdition. So at base level, and I'll have on the screen so you guys can compare base level versus max level. So at base level, the Perdition on hitting a poisoned enemy, increase firearm attack and apply this buff to the attack. On defeating a poisoned enemy, the defeated enemy will trigger an explosion with a certain chance, inflicting additional damage to nearby enemies. Inflicts poison on the enemies damaged by the explosion. So based off of that information, this seems to be a pretty good crowd control weapon um, built off of poison. So the basic information of this weapon, you have minus 40% hit fire accuracy and minus 40% aimed shot accuracy at base level, as you can see. On the screen that gets improved a little bit as you level up the unique ability so on hitting a poisoned enemy you receive 10% firearm attack which is nice and then once you kill a uh, poisoned enemy you get the explosion on a set chance so base is 30% trigger rate on the explosion when you kill a poisoned enemy and the damage range is four meters for that explosion your additional damage 55% so you'll get an additional 55% of their damage as explode uh, exploding poison damage and once you do trigger that explosion you will inflict poison onto the enemy the duration is five seconds at a 2.5 second damage taking interval and the damage will be 15% so that's the unique ability of the fallen hope ultimate assault rifle called Perdition. Uh, based off of the stats here on paper, this unique ability does seem really, really good. So now let's go ahead and shift over to the base stats of the Fallen Hope Assault Rifle. So here we are with the base stats. So this is a general rounds weapon. It's an assault rifle, ultimate, <clears throat> and the firearm attack of this weapon is 12,813 with a fire rate of 600 and a 35 round magazine. Not, not the worst stats, but they're pretty, they're pretty good stats, um, especially for an assault rifle. Reload time 1.7 seconds with a firearm critical hit rate of 12% and a firearm critical hit damage of 1.7 times multiplier. You have a 4.55% uh, attribute status effect trigger rate and a weak point damage multiplier of a 1.2 times. So these stats right here are not the best stats that you can get on a weapon. Um, for an ultimate weapon, I do think this might be a little bit lacking to be an ultimate weapon. You know, when, when you use an ultimate weapon, you're, I, I personally believe that the ultimate weapon should outshine uh, purple weapons, rare weapons, um, in almost all aspects. Now, I, I know the Eternal Willpower is a pretty insane assault rifle. Probably, not probably. Um, it is the best assault rifle, but it's a little bit disappointing that the base stats on that definitely outshine the base stats on an ultimate weapon like the Fallen Hope. So what are some of the benefits instead of talking about some negatives? So a benefit of the stats for the Fallen Hope, I would say is definitely that 600 fire rate. That one, that is pretty nice with a pretty low 1.7 second reload time. I guess what really hurts this weapon um, is the fire and critical hit rate only being 12%. And also, I know this may sound weird, but the status effect trigger rate only being at 4.55%. Being that this weapon thrives off of poisoning enemies you would assume that the status effect trigger rate would be higher than a 4.55 percent 
a 4.5% is a little bit tough to actually proc poison, especially if you put a poison enhancement mod on to your weapon. You, it's going to be tough to actually apply the poison. Now, I'm talking in particular to the assault rifle as a standalone DPS weapon. I'm not talking about it with the assistance of descendants. And we will get to that portion in the video. Just stay tuned to that. But as a standalone DPS weapon, the stats on this weapon are definitely average. Um, I, nothing really to be excited for. So that's the base stats of this weapon. Um, and your hip fire accuracy is a 50 with your aim shot accuracy being a 53.33. So that minus 40%, as you can see, is definitely hitting hard on this weapon. So um, if you are going to get this weapon, first things first, grind out and get multiples so that way you can reduce that 40%. It'll go down to a 20%. So definitely get, do that just for um, usability on this weapon. So anyways, so now that we got the base stats covered, let's go ahead and roll over to our first build. So I'll be showing you two different builds you could do, and we're going to go over the first one right now. So build number one, we got a, we went ahead and, well, I decided, all right, so since this weapon is, its unique ability is built for poison, um, we went ahead and went full bore into the poison aspect of this weapon. So let's go ahead and look at what we, what we put on here. So obviously we put our baseline stuff on here. We went ahead and put better insight on here for some critical hit rate and because of that critical hit rate was a base of 12 percent we decided to put on edging shot as well although edging shot reduces our firearm attack our firearm attack is not really really high to where that negative 15 percent will negatively impact us so we are mainly just getting our positives are outweighing our negatives right now so we put on edging shot for that little bit of extra critical hit chance, which as you see, put us at a 21.84% critical hit chance. Not the greatest, but it's still better than 12. Rifle and reinforcement and action and reaction for that, you know, nice old uh, firearm attack. And then we went ahead and put on concentration priority for firearm critical hit damage plus 120%. But our reload modifier, reload time modifier takes a little hit from that taking us from a 1.7 second reload time to a 2.7 seconds. So that added a whole second. Well, because of this too. So <laughs> we added about half a second uh, by using concentration priority and then better insight is, an, is our other critical hit damage mod that we decided to go with. So our critical hit damage multiplier is now at a 5.011. Really good really good critical hit damage multiplier so now this these last three mods that we went ahead and put on are designed specifically to help us with the unique ability to go ahead and you know boost that aspect of the fallen hope rifle so we went on and put toxic enhancement on so that way each shot goes ahead and gives us 30 percent of our firearm attack as toxic damage so we're getting an added uh, dps bonus here we went ahead on top of this, we went ahead and put on Poison Priority. Poison Priority is a Toxic Attack plus 50% with a Reload Time Modifier of minus 30%. So this is where our other half a second came in. So now instead of 1.7, we are at 2.7 for the Reload Time, but we are benefiting from plus 50% Toxic Attack. Now I want to tell you, you can put on a Toxic Gun Barrel if you would like. Toxic Gun Barrel will give you a higher Toxic Attack, but will reduce your fire rate. So what I will say is, as you see, there's an empty slot in our build here. Now, this one will be up to you. Watch the rest of this video before you decide to, you know, fully invest in this weapon. But let's say you want to go deeper into the poison route. You would take off poison priority and put on toxic gun barrel. So toxic gun barrel, what's going to happen is, yep. Yeah, so you're going to have a negative 25% to your fire rate, but you can easily make up um for that if you go ahead and put on fire rate up mod so you're completely negating that with this extra mod slot that you put here obviously that's going to cause you an extra cost you an extra crystallization catalyst but that's up for you that's for you to decide 
So you will get more damage out of your Toxic if you go ahead and use Toxic Gun Barrel instead of Toxic, toxic Priority. But if you don't want to reduce your fire rate and you would like to put something else in this slot except for fire rate, then take Poison Priority. So, and our last thing that we decided to go with was Toxic Conductor. The reason why we went for Toxic Conductor was because when the enemy is poisoned, we are getting an extra 26% fire attack by attacking poisoned enemies. And with this weapon and its unique ability, our goal is to constantly poison most, if not everything that we are shooting. So that's why we put Toxic Conductor on. So that's build number one. Now, before we get into some damage testing here, I wanna go ahead and show you build number two, which is a alternative build to the full toxic investment. So let's roll straight over to that second build. All right, so here is our second build. Now, as you see, we didn't do anything with toxic and we went the standard DPS trope. We got our critical hits, our critical hit rates, we got our base damage, our critical hit damage right here, and we also have weak point damage here. Now, as you see, there's two slots here. My crystallization catalyst doesn't really allow me to fully go into this second variation of the build just due to the polarity slots that are equipped. With. But I can tell you what you would put in replacement if this is something you decided to do instead. <clears throat> so, if you have good aim, I would say real life fighter. Slap real life fighter in one of these two slots and you're golden there. And let's say you don't want to do any of that. So let's say you don't want to use any of that. What I would suggest that you use instead would be um, quality of life mods. So I would suggest maybe adding extended magazine, uh, something like you know extended magazine on there, or go ahead and put a fire rate mod, or you know if if you need a little bit of assistance with recoil or accuracy or anything like that, place yourself one of them type of mods there. But this will be the second variation of the build if you don't want to go the poison route. So I didn't go over the base stats, but let's go ahead and do that now with, with these mods on. So we're going to be looking at the full poison build and we're going to go ahead and check out our base stats here. So firearm attack now is 26,138.52 with a 600 um, fire rate and a 35 round mag. Those two stay the same. Our reload time modifier is now a 2.72 second reload time with a critical hit rate of 21.84 and a critical hit damage multiplier of a five times multiplier. Really great. Uh, attribute satisfied trigger rate stays the same at a 4.55 and our weak point damage stays the same at a 1.2 times multiplier. Um, hit fire accuracy and aim shot accuracy also stays the same because we didn't apply any mod to that. If that's something that you want to enhance with this particular build, this final slot here, go ahead and slot that in there, something for accuracy. Now I want to go ahead and scroll over and look at the second variation of the build, look at the base stats are there, and I want to explain one thing really quick. So if you look at the firearm attack here, it says 22,807, but if you go back here and look at this 26,138, that's simply because toxic priority our toxic conductor already implements that bonus 26% when you are hitting a poisoned enemy. So our point, our farm attack is not uh, 26,138, but it is actually 22,807. So this build, 22,807.14 farm attack with a 600 fire rate, 35 round magazine. Those two stay the same. Our reload time modifier now is a 2.21 second. Uh, reload time with a critical hit rate of 21.84 and a five times uh, critical hit damage multiplier. Attribute status effect trigger rate stays the same at a 4.55%. And our weak point damage now is at a 2.1 times multiplier. Um, aim shot accuracy is at a, or well, our hit fire accuracy is 40 and aim shot accuracy is 42.66. So we do take a slight hit on our accuracy, which is already not that great, just because we have have aiming on for more weak point damage, but reduce our accuracy by 20%. So there is that. So we're going to go ahead and take this first build and go ahead and see what the damage is looking like. As a standalone 
weapon. We will not be using descendants for assistance. We will just be showing you the damage of this weapon. So with this particular build, as you know, oh, actually, let me show you this last thing. So you see we have attribute status effect trigger rate rolled onto here uh, with a 22.6%, a weak point damage of 10.4, toxic attack on there, and fire attack plus 11.9%. I want to show you now really quick at the infos tab on this particular weapon. I want you to see our status effect trigger rate now is still only a 5.578%. So that's not that great still. So anyways, let's go ahead and see what the damage is looking like here. About 19,000 with a 6,800 uh, poison attack. Now we poison the enemy. So let's see, 22,000, 6,800 poison stays the same. So we just went through a full magazine and we only procced the poison status effect one time and we barely hit any crits. So I will say right off bat, that is a downfall of this particular weapon. Like I said, because it's an ultimate weapon, it seems a little bit underwhelming. The fact that it's an ultimate weapon and it has a fairly low critical hit chance and the status effect trigger rate for this particular weapon being that it's unique ability is solely based off of hitting poisoned targets as a standalone dps weapon it's a little bit tough to actually be able to make this weapon work in a combat scenario so what we're going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and change the the enemies that are in here put a group of enemies and make them not invincible so that way we can kind of we can try to see if we can get the en enemy poisoned and on top of that, see if we can actually get the unique ability to proc on that explosion. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do right now. So as you see there, we did get the explosion off. We got the proc, we got the explosion off, and I went ahead and exploded. And then it ticked the enemies around, as you see, for about a, a roughly a 4,000 damage uh, explosive, explosive tick. There we go. You see, we got the explosive, the explosion off, and it did a little, did less damage this time around. So the Fallen Hope as a standalone DPS weapon is not too great it's fairly lackluster um at least with this poison setup where you get um, where we're optimizing the poison aspect of this weapon to a extreme degree so you've seen this weapon so now let's go ahead and see what the standard dps version or variation of this weapon can do So we're gonna do the one target. We're gonna go ahead and just see what the what each shot is looking like here. We're not worried about the unique ability at this time. We're just seeing what the damage is. So let's see. All right, uh, that was a crit. So 28,000 on a headshot non-crit. Now, if you see why we're getting poison, well, that's simply just because we have poison or toxic attack rolled onto the weapon. So. Uh, about 142,000 crits. So our crits are definitely a lot, um, a lot more than with the poison variation. So there you go. And with this particular setup, we because we still have Toxic Attack World on here, we're still going to be able to trigger um, a Toxic Proc or a Poison um, Debuff, whatever you want to call it, onto the enemy. So that's this weapon. Now let's go ahead and see how what if this weapon, this variation of the build can perform a the explosive aspect of the unique ability.
All right, so check that out. You see that? A 23,000 damage proc. Now, I'm going to tell you something that isn't that I'm not too sure on currently. <sighs> it's not that this build is making it proc for bigger numbers. Um, because as you see, I'm not even utilizing the weak point aspect of it. I've been I'm hitting body shots and the only difference these all six of these mods are the exact same on here. See, all of these mods are the exact same. So I'm not sure what's causing the explosion to hit for. As you see, we had a 2,000, a 4,000, an 8,000, and a 23,000. I'm not sure why the fluctuation, if <clears throat> the unique ability clearly states that the explosive trigger is 30% with a range of four meters and additional damage is 55%. Now, my only assumption could be that possibly whatever damage or whatever the last hit of your weapon does is what the scaling of that damage is off of. And what I mean is if you hit a crit or don't crit and you kill the enemy and you trigger the explosion, I'm not too sure. But the upper echelon of this damage based off of all of my testing in the field has been 23,000, 30,000 ish area. Um, doesn't seem to go too much higher than that. So there's that. All right, so back to the um, full fledged poison aspect of this build. Now we are gonna go ahead and incorporate a um, descendant. And the descendant of choice obviously is gonna be Freyna just because she is built for poison. All right, so we've seen the damage of this weapon um, and what it can do as a standalone weapon. Now let's go ahead and see if this weapon will start shining if we use a Descendants for assistance. And we're, like I said, we're gonna be using Freyna just because her toxic, this weapon is built for toxic, so perfect. So we, so we think. So now let's go ahead and see if this weapon can perform uh, with, will we get more explosions? Yes. And the only reason I say yes is because the percentage isn't gonna change off of the trigger rate um, for the explosion. But what when I say yes, what I mean is because the enemies will guaranteed always be with toxic on them because of Freyna, that increases our likelihood of receiving an explosion or the unique ability of this weapon. So let's go ahead and see how likely it is for us to get some explosions here. All right, so we got our first one. As you see, it hit, it's hitting some 14,000 damage. All right, there you go. We got another explosion that popped off, as you see in there. So, <sighs> obviously, as you level up this unique ability, your chance um, for explosion is going to go up. So as you seen when I did do when I showed you the comparison between a base level and a max level, it's only a 40% chance instead of a 30% chance. So it isn't like it skyrockets. I would I would like for it to be a little bit higher, maybe like a 50 minimum, 60 would be nice. Uh, but you know we're we're kind of just we got to work with what we got. So. This weapon, it's it's honesty time, all right? I'm not about to be capping, I ain't festa, you know, I'm gonna I'm keep it a whole stack with you right now. This weapon is not that great. If we're talking about uh, this weapon as a DPS weapon, it sucks. Um, it doesn't really do too great uh, of damage. There's just other options better than the Fallen Hope. Fallen Hope, its ability, its unique ability is pretty lackluster. It sounds good on paper, but in practicality, it doesn't seem to really do too great. Now, obviously mine is not maxed out. Now, what I will say is it's still viable. It isn't like this weapon is actually trash. You can still take this and mob clear with it. You can still take this and do 
okay damage to elites and commanders. I wouldn't take this into a Colossus fight, but that's just me. Now, this weapon is a standalone DPS. As a standalone DPS weapon, isn't all that great just because its unique ability. Oh man, I don't even know what to say about it. I mean, you just look at the unique ability as like additional damage on chance. Um, if you don't, if you don't roll toxic onto your weapon, if you don't put toxic into your um, build, like your toxic enhancement. You aren't going to benefit from that unique ability if you're not using Freyna. So this weapon is like heavily dependent on using Freyna. And it's also heavily dependent on having toxic rolled on a weapon if you don't have Freyna. So there's too many stipulations with this weapon to make it S tier. It isn't garbage. It's still usable, but it's just not that great. So me personally, I would say don't be like me. And don't invest. What do we put? We put a uh, energy activator in here and six crystallization catalysts. Don't don't be like me and don't do that. I did this just to show you guys and showcase the weapon. It's it's an okay weapon. It's just not that great. So yeah. So that's the fallen hope in a nutshell. It's a mid tier weapon for sure. Um, you can definitely do better and find better. So. Like I said, unless you really want to, just don't invest into this. And for those who have, who have already invested, I wish we can get refunds. So that's it for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. Subbing to the channel definitely helps, keeps me motivated to go ahead and keep rolling out the content for y'all. I got a couple other um, videos coming up, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. Uh, so you guys don't miss these next couple videos. So this next one that I'll be dropping, it's a good one. And I spent a lot of time on it. So make sure you check it out when I do drop it. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time.